safe for work, though. <laughs> All right. Good afternoon. Happy uh, Monday. That's, in fact, the case. Over the weekend, the humanitarian coordinator for Yemen, Jamie McGoldrick, expressed his deep concern over reports of airstrikes on civilians in the Sada governorate, with attacks on a house and private car in two separate districts having killed at least 12 people, including women and children. He said that these new incidents, which are being investigated by the UN Human Rights Office, are, are an example of the brutality with uh, which the conflict is being conducted, adding that all parties to the conflict continue to show a disregard for the protection of civilians and the principle, principle of distinction between civilians and combatants in the conduction of military activities. Mr. McGoldrick once again urged all parties to the conflict and those with influence and who support them to uphold their responsibilities under international humanitarian law and of protection of the safety of civilians. Also in Yemen, I want to give you an update on the situation regarding the UN's ability to access fuel needed for its humanitarian operations in the country. Uh, I think you'll remember our colleague um, Auke Lutzma briefed you last week. Some of his comments may have been uh, misunderstood and perhaps taken out of context. Since the ongoing dialogue, since then, the ongoing dialogue between our colleagues on the ground and relevant authorities was able to clear up some of the misunderstandings and resulted in assurances that the fuel will be moving this week from Aden to Sana. We ask authorities for a mechanism to help ensure regular delivery of aviation fuel for UN operations. All of the components of the UN in Yemen will continue to work with all the parties so as to bring some relief to the people of Yemen as they face an unspeakable humanitarian crisis. It is important that the international community not lose sight of the plight of the millions of vulnerable Yemeni men, women, and children. Their well-being remains of utmost importance. And turning to Iraq, our humanitarian colleagues there tell us that preparations to help those who need, um, those in need are underway for the anticipated military campaign to retake Daesh-held town of Tel Afar, some 60 kilometers west of Mosul. The population of the town is estimated at some 250,000, but the number of people have fallen significantly over the course of the conflict. Some 10,000 people are believed to remain trapped in the city, with another 50,000 uh, living in the surrounding areas. Aid workers are preparing to provide water, hygiene, sanitation assistance, ready-to-eat meals, and emergency medical care. Supplies such as food, health kits, and shelter material have been pre-positioned with some 50,000 people anticipated to be uprooted in the coming weeks. And also on an Iraq-related note, the Director General of UNESCO, Irena Bokova, today condemned the killing of two Iraqi journalists whose bodies were found south of Mosul on July 30th. And the Special Representative for the Secretary General for Libya, uh, Hassam Salame visited Tripoli over the weekend. He also was in Al Quba and Al Baida. Speaking to the press after his meetings, he said there is a window of opportunity in Libya. He added that while no illusions, he had no illusions regarding the difficulties and challenges ahead, he was optimistic that Libya could emerge from this crisis. However, he warned that it was very important and that every day without a political agreement had negative security, economic, and social consequences for all Libyans. Meanwhile, the humanitarian coordinator for the country, Maria Ribeiro, expressed concern over reports of severe shortages of basic necessity, including life-saving medical supplies due to the conflict in Derna. She urged all parties to consider the safety and well-being of civilians as a top priority and to allow for the safe delivery of humanitarian supplies. Humanitarian workers are monitoring the situation closely and are preparing to deliver humanitarian assistance to the city to meet the most acute gaps. And from Mali, our colleagues at the UN mission in that country say that since fighting resumed between the platform and the coordination des mouvements de la Zawad last June in the Kidal region, it has received allegations of grave human rights violations. Out of 67 allegations, the mission has been able to confirm 34, including forced disappearances, kidnappings, and theft, among others. In Anifis, the mission saw individual and mass graves. It is determined to continue its investigation. The mission also reiterates its call for a cessation of hostilities. More information on the mission's website. 
And on the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Marie-Pierre Poirier, the UNICEF Regional Director for West and Central Africa, said today the world must not turn a blind eye to the dire situation of children and families in the Grand Kasai region. Over the past 12 months, more than 1.4 million, including 850,000 children, have been forced from their homes and their lives turned upside down by widespread uh, acts of, violent, uh, of extreme violence. Ms. Poirier said that many children have been recruited by armed forces, drugged and caught in the violence. UNICEF is reaching more than 150,000 people impacted by the crisis with nutrition, health, education, water and sanitation, direct cash grants and child protection interventions. However, Ms. Poirier warned that unless this violence stops, their best work will never be enough. <clears throat> um, and uh, also, I just wanted to flag that in, um, in Colombia, in a press statement issued yesterday, the UN mission in Colombia confirmed that a team composed of observers from the UN mission, members of the Colombian National Police and the FARC-EP involved in an operation to extract FARC-EP arms cash was ambushed in a rural area in the Department of Cauca. A member of the Colombian National Police Unit that provides security for such operations was shot and wounded. No harm to UN observers. The mission praised the work of the Colombian security forces in support of the arms cash operations and expressed its hope for the speedy recovery of the wounded member of the National Police. And you'll see over the weekend that the Security Council unanimously approved a resolution on the Democratic People's Republic of Korea condemning the country's recent ballistic missile launches. The Council reaffirmed its previous decision that the DPRK shall not conduct any further tests using ballistic missile technology, nuclear tests, or any other provocation. Additional sanctions were also imposed on exports of coal, iron, and iron ore, as well as seafood. Noting findings by the UN Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs that well over half of the people in the DPRK suffer from major food insecurities in food and medical care, the Council also voiced its regret at the country's massive diversion of scarce resources towards its development of nuclear weapons and a number of expensive ballistic missile program. And you'll see that on Friday we issued, late on Friday, we issued a note to correspondents confirming that we had received notification from the delegation of the U.S. expressing the U.S.'s intention to withdraw from the Paris Agreement on climate change as soon as it is eligible to do so. The communication also says that the U.S. intends to exercise its right to withdraw unless it identifies suitable terms for re-engagement. For his part, the Secretary General reiterated that he welcomes any effort for the U.S. to re-engage on the agreement and says it's crucial that it remains a leader on climate sustainable issues. The text of the communication will be circulated by the Secretary General this week in English and French. A uh, couple of questions that have been raised to me uh, late yesterday and over the weekend. On the Kenyan elections, uh, as in all elections, we urge the leadership of the various political parties to respect the outcome of the elections and use its existing legal channels to address any grievances. We also call for impartial and human rights compliant conduct of the police and security forces as a cornerstone for peaceful elections. And you know that balloting will go on tomorrow. And I was also asked about uh, the decision by Carlo uh, Del Ponte to resign from the Syria Commission of Inquiry. The Secretary General notes with regret her decision to resign from the Syria Commission of Inquiry. It is regretful for, he is grateful for her service and her contribution to the important work of the Commission, also as a tireless advocate for the cause of accountability throughout her career. As the international community continues to search for a political solution on the Syrian crisis, the Secretary General reiterates the importance of accountability for crimes against civilians during the conflict. In that regard, he supports the continued work of the Commission as an important and integral part of the accountability process. And lastly, we welcome um, Eritrea to our honor roll, who, and they become the 120th country that has, um, uh, that has um, gone to the honor, honor roll. Um, that's it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Steph. Uh, so what's the fate of the Independent International uh, Commission of Inquiry? Um, 
on the Syrian Arab Republic. Uh, my, my, understanding that the the resignation. my understanding is that the Commission will continue its uh, work. The Secretary General continues to support its work. Uh, but the, the questions as to replacement of Ms. Del Ponte and the, the mechanics should be addressed in, in Geneva to the Human Rights Council or to the last to the remaining um, commissioners, uh, Karen Abouzaid and Mr. Pinheiro. Uh, my other question is on, in fact, on Lebanon. You announced that there are some kind of uh, contingency, contingency plans for uh, an anticipation of uh, 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 an, an assault. Uh, to retake Tal mm -hmm. in Iraq. And at the same time, yeah. there are um, almost the same preparations at the border, at the eastern side of Lebanon, to retake some uh, rural uh, areas. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any plans, uh, contingency plans, for those areas? I will check with our colleagues at OCHA. Rosalind, then Matthew. I wanted to follow up on the Del Ponte resignation. Her criticism is that the Security Council is not willing to refer these cases inside Syria to the ICJ, and that she says that the process has fallen victim to politics, not to the interest of achieving justice for the Syrian people. Does the Secretary General agree with Ms. Del Ponte's assessment? Does he have any out-of-the-box ideas on how to speed up the process of accountability even as the Civil War continues? Well, the, the, the a couple of things. Uh, the process of accountability is a critical one. It is an important one. It is one that takes time. Uh, information needs to be gathered uh, in a way that will stand up in where, wherever, uh, in whatever circumstances people will have to face uh, to face justice. It's something that we can understand is, is deeply frustrating uh, to the victims, first and foremost. Um, there is also the Syria accountability mechanism that was voted on by the General Assembly. Uh, the person that was named to head that, um, uh, that mechanism starts uh, her work there officially uh, tomorrow, so they will start, uh, they will start to work. Um, it is no secret to anyone uh, that the deadlock in the Security Council, I think, has been a source of frustration, uh, not only for the Secretary General, but for others uh, inside the UN. Um, but there's no getting around the Security Council. And I think we have repeatedly called for greater unity of purpose from Security Council members on the issue of Syria. Mr. Lee. Great, thanks a lot. Uh, two questions to begin, uh, South Sudan and Cameroon. South Sudan, I just wanted to know whether, whether UNMIS, the mission, uh, you know, will confirm the, the retaking of PAGAC in the uh, largely new air part of the country and that the idea that thousands of people have fled and that aid workers have been forced out. What's given that the mission is in the country and that there was we're, supposed we're to be a We're waiting an update. We, we'd ask that we're waiting an update from the mission. Okay. I, I'm awaiting an update, I think, from you about Cameroon. You'd said that you would have something on Monday on this visit. And I'm asking because the Paul Bia government has also sent similar trios to, 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 to mm -hmm. Brussels where they were met with protests to South Africa, where they didn't meet opponents. So here, in, here at the UN, who are they going to meet with? My understanding is that they will meet with the Deputy Secretary General. Do you know what day? Uh, no, we can find out. Will it be on his, her schedule? And is there some way to either get a readout? We'll see what it it'll open? be. I mean, there's no, uh, well, She's clearly, done some clearly, clearly, clearly if, I'm, if I'm saying it, uh, if I'm confirming it publicly, okay. uh, it'll be on her, on her schedule. And we'll see what comes out of the meeting. Can it be a photo op as well? Uh, we'll see what comes out, yep. Uh, thanks, Steph. Over the weekend, the, is Israel's communications minister announced that um, he'd be taking steps to close Al Jazeera's offices uh, in Israel. I'm wondering if the Secretary General has any reaction to that um, and its implications or potential implications um, for press freedom in the country and in the region. Uh, we are obviously aware uh, we're following the situation closely, both from here and our, our colleagues on the on, on the ground. Uh, my reading of the situation that there are a number of steps that are being taken. There may have been political statements, uh, so I, I'm not going to comment any further on it. But just to say that our position of principle is obviously in favor of freedom of expression and freedom of the press and their ability to work uh, and report. Yes, sir. And then Mr. Klein, then eating. Uh, 
Thanks. The U.S. Secretary of State said today Washington was open to direct talks with North Korea with some pretty serious conditions. I'm curious if the SG would see direct talks as a positive development and if you'd lend any help to that effort. Well, yeah, as a matter of principle, uh, we would obviously uh, support uh, direct talks between any uh, any parties. I think we're, uh, we've seen different messages come out of the uh, of the ASEAN uh, of the meetings in um, in Manila. I think the 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 resolution that was passed uh, sends a clear message uh, to the DPRK from the Security Council, the Secretary General. For him, it's important that uh, the DPRK abide uh, by the resolution and allow for space for resumption of, of dialogue. And he calls, Secretary General so calls on all member states uh, to uh, support and implement uh, the resolution. Joe. Uh, yeah, with respect to the resolution, I believe uh, one of the elements is to uh, uh, prohibit member states from um, admitting any f any more uh, North Korean workers uh, into their countries in order to prevent uh, remittances going back to North Korea and adding to their uh, hard currency reserves. Um, I'm wondering if you can um, confirm whether the uh, the secretary, the UN secretary, will abide by that, and I have in mind, I think something you've been asked about previously by, by Matthew and and maybe others uh, regarding this uh, junior professionals program and the uh, placing of one or more North Korean staffers into the uh, Department of Public Affairs. Is that, is that, going to continue, and and if so, how how can it be reconciled with the spirit of the uh, resolution that was just passed? Uh, you know, I think we are fully aware of the Security Council uh, resolutions. Um, I'm not sure uh, we can create a link between the two, but uh, let me see what else I can find out before I answer any well, further. Well, I mean, I just, no, I, I understand the what logical you're, link being. That I, I understand what you're trying to say. I just will not say anything more at this uh, uh, at this point. I think for for the Secretary General, I think it's it's also important to to note that uh, the resolution and the Security Council uh, reiterate their commitment to a peaceful and diplomatic and political situ situation. Um, and uh, he. I think to go back to, to Luke's question, he's obviously uh, reaffirms his commitment to do whatever he can to help defuse the situation. Yes, Edie. Uh, Steph, does the Secretary General have any comment on the latest developments in Venezuela, um, prospect of new opposition protests, the new constituent assembly making No, a I've lot taken of I don't have anything at this time. I hope to have something a bit later uh, today. Yes, sir. Uh, just a, a clarification whether you've made any announcement about the SG visit to the Middle East and uh, I did not. You did not miss anything. <laughs> and is there anything that you can tell us uh, uh, about this visit? Uh, no, because I haven't announced anything. Yes, these are. Yeah, uh, recent reports speak about uh, more attacks against Syrian civilians in northern Syria, mm -hmm. uh, with with use of uh, white phosphorus, mm -hmm. as this has been repeated. What is the the, the position of I've United seen, Nations? I've seen the press reports. Um, obviously, any if if attacks using white phosphorus were to have occurred, they were to be condemned. Uh, but I will see from my colleagues on the ground if we have any more information. Mr. Lee. Sure. I wanted to, uh, on your the thing, what you said about Kenya, I wanted to ask you specifically um, about this, uh, these reported um, uh, abductions and deportations of consultants uh, working for Raila Odinga by the Kenyatta government. Uh, is the UN system aware of them? What do they think of the idea that uh, people working on the campaign of one of the, uh, of, of this candidate could be thrown out of the country? Look, I think is in general terms uh, for this election, the respect for freedom of association, opinion and expression are critical elements uh, to have uh, an electoral process that has uh, integrity. We'll continue uh, to monitor the respect for civic and media space throughout the elections. So you're, it, this is a bad I, thing. As I said, I think is in, in general and in general terms, uh, 
we need to have a space for civil, uh, civic engagement, for civil society, and for the media. Yeah, Take your uh, call and come back to us. Yes, Nizar. Uh, earlier, you, you explained about the refueling in Sana'a uh, Airport and they are, that they are resuming mm -hmm. supply of yeah, fuel we to expect, that. Yeah, we expect the fuel to resume. I mean, this uh, lapse of time, I mean, mm -hmm. for, for many days now, uh, they haven't been able to do that. How, how many uh, lives or people who have been affected by such a delay? In, in I, I can't put a number on it, uh, but obviously, you know, this is just one issue that we've had to deal with. Uh, we've had critical challenges of humanitarian access throughout uh, the conflict areas in Yemen. Uh, regardless of who was controlling what, what part. Uh, and as we've said, we have seen a wanton disregard by the various warring parties for the well-being of civilians. You talk, you talk about wanton disregard, but here, I mean, the, the, the attacks are from the air. And it's known that the coalition is mm -hmm. carrying out these attacks, especially mm -hmm. the one in Sada, with so many victims, obliteration of whole areas sometimes, mm -hmm. and markets. Does the Secretary General call for an investigation into such crimes? Of course, all, uh, all attacks on civilians need to be investigated. Luke? On Yemen also, I uh, looked up the WHO funding status. Looks like the appeal has gone from 15% fulfilled in June to 75% now, which is a big jump. Does the UN see that as a positive development, that this is getting the attention it needs? And, well, I, and would you attribute anything to that increase? You know, obviously, uh, it, it, the more uh, humanitarian appeals are funded, uh, the better it is for the people of Yemen, for the beneficiaries. Uh, I think for the WHO, you need to, to contact them on the exact uh, numbers and what they would uh, attribute it to. Our overall humanitarian response plan for Yemen has now received more than $900 million, or 44% of the uh, $2.1 billion we, we need. And so far this year, the numbers I've been given is that our humanitarian partners have reached 5.9 million people with humanitarian protection assistance. An average of 4 million people every month are receiving continuous food assistance. Yep. Matthew and then Nizar. Sure. Sorry for the phone sound. It's a big periscope day down at the courthouse, and that's actually what I want to ask you about. In the, in the course of a, of a hearing on uh, Mr. Englap saying convicted for UN-related briberies, continued house arrest rather than jail, mm -hmm. it emerged that there have been many more than I think, believe certainly the judge, definitely the prosecution knew visitors to, to his apartment during this time. And I wanted to know, can you say whether during the time of the trial and specifically since the convictions one week, one, 10 days ago, have there been UN, UN individuals, to your knowledge, can you check, I guess with OLA, whether they have in fact visited this, there was a, there's been, apparently been a masseuse there four, four to ten hours a day. Well, I, we don't, whole, we, so I, I can tell you that we don't UN, employ, we do don't deal with masseuses. I understand. Or masseur, masseur, or masseuse. Sure. They also cook. Uh, uh, we're not uh, in the business of monitoring who goes into people's homes, whether they work for the UN or not. So I, there is no way for me to to answer your your question. I'm asking about the about contacts between UN people and Mr. Englap saying. I'm since not the aware of any. Contacts in Saudi Arabia uh, for many weeks now. The attacks continue unabated against Al Awamiya and other places in Qatif. Uh, has the United Nations been able to access the area or just uh, uh, have any position on what's happening there? So whole areas have been destroyed. I, I'm in not the attack. not aware that we've been able to access. Thank and you. Do you intend? Do you intend? Uh, I mean, I'll to see what we have. Thank you.